Okay guys, we're back out here. Work has happened that you haven't seen. Okay. We got a decent way on this. Um, this is what you've missed. This right here is a high spot for sure. Okay, right above it, it's actually flat. It's just right here. And I think, oh, lost my balance. I think this is where the well took place. So this probably raised up a little bit there. Um, yeah, we're to the point now where um, if I did any more on there, I'd just be chasing my tail and the door would have Bondo up to here on it to try and cover it. But this edge is not sanded. Just, just the edge is knocked off. Uh, the bottom went down to metal. So it's a good start. Um, I want to work on this a little bit more tonight. And tomorrow, Junior's gonna come out here. We're gonna put the hood on. And we're gonna line the whole nose so I can button up the front of this fender, weld up these holes, and start getting some pieces in epoxy. I finished up that little thing that was in the door. Um, yeah, just get some of this sealed up. Junior's sanding most of the rocker. Rocker does have some deep pits in it, no rot. Okay, because the top of the molding was bowed out and everything was going in there. If you guys remember, it was full of the salt and sand. So, thank goodness there's no holes through it. Um, to me, it doesn't matter if the holes went this way or this way. Holes are holes. So, I'm going to have to come up with something to treat that. That is a question to everybody on what do they use. Um, not looking to spray anything on there like I did in that inner patch on the rear rocker. I'm thinking something like a rust converter like navel jelly, something I could put on, allow it to neutralize the rust, and then either take it off. I've seen a lot of products that turn it black, but the question is, is that black stuff suitable for me to, I'm gonna rock a shoots this, without a doubt. I gotta fill in these molding holes. It's on there, it's a couple of them. I think this one, two, three, these four of them, I gotta deal with, which is gonna be tricky. I can't get behind them. So that's gonna take a little bit. I came up with something I'm gonna try, see how that works out. But regardless whether it gets the molding or it does not get the molding, it's getting schutzed. Um, but I think after it shuts it, the molding's coming off. I think we're dechroming this car as much as we can. I'm not taking the chrome off, I'm just dechroming it. So then the remaining chrome, whatever condition it's in, will be satisfactory. So instead of having a lot of bad chrome, <laughs> it just, it still, it still tweaks me that all this chrome was mint when I got the car. It just shows you it was garaged like they said it was. So I didn't have the car 11 years. Um, with that said, I'm going to work on this. Um, basically what I'm going to do is, I have no way of shrinking this. This right here, this other gray, is, uh, whatchamacallit, that's um, Everglass. Okay. Um, so underneath this, it is Everglass, up to like... I guess probably about here. There's a very thin coat of it. I did do the seam in the back, haven't sand there yet. So now that I have this over here, I really don't want to start heating it. So basically what I'm going to go in there is I'm going to use the pick end of my, um, one of my body hammers and just slowly work it and keep checking it. Now this door is not flat here. This door does come, I have an arc in. But the key is I want to match the arc that I have everywhere else because I have it here good and I have it right above it good just here this comes out and it goes back down so and I purposely have this door set in a hair to this door so as I'm sanding this I'm riding on this door or else what will happen is every time I sand it I'll wear this to the end I'll keep wearing it to the end then when I'm done I'll let this I'll bring this door back out a hair to where it's supposed to be and then I'll give it its final sand and that's how I get it the best I'm gonna get it at least. So, give or take. So, with that said guys, I'm done gabbing. I'm gonna start tapping. Okay, I've had enough of this. The spring actually fell out on the floor. I'd pull something off of this thing and keep hissing a little bit or it'd come out full, full force. And when you're working here with Bondo and that thing comes off full force and comes like a fire hose, this whole place turns into a cloud. So, we got rid of that which is who knows how many millions of years old. I'm replacing them with 
genuine Milton's. And I also put a new end on here. Put a new end on here. I didn't get a new end for there. So, and I got two of these. One I already put on the hose. There's a spare. I got my mask on. I don't really believe in aerosol cans, but I've used, oh, I don't even know where it is. Uh, can't find it. But I've used the, uh, this. No, that ain't it. I don't know where it is. But I've used the um, metal X in an aerosol can. I think Sam makes it. That's what's on this door right here, and I've been sanding it, and I notice it's still there. It's still there. I think it's a decent amount. To get past that. If you look, you can still see it's there. I'm not saying it's 100% there, but it's still there. It takes a lot to get that stuff off. That's 120. I'll show you guys that. So, that was where I laid the plate for the door. I gave it a second coat. I figured I'd just sand it right off, but I've been hitting it with the straight line sander, and it's still mostly there. So, I guess this stuff is pretty tough, huh? So, okay, guys, I just roughed that in. And I just do a little black paint on there as a guide coat because I just roughed in the area I did. I'm going to give this a block, try and flatten it, see what the deal is with it, and possibly give it one more skim and call it good. As you can see, I got this cover now. I should have covered that days ago. Totally sealed off. Keep me from bumping into it any other kind of crap that can go into the bond, though. That. The center of the tape is actually backwards. So no glue was sticking on it. So let's see what we got with this. And uh, I'm at a flat black. So I've been using satin. Let's give this a quick thing. I never got to the store to get sandpaper, so this is actually kicking my ass a little bit. Um, good sandpaper is the key, guys. Definitely a key. I like what I've been using, but I'm just out of it. My 136 grit piece broke a while ago. So if you want to rough it in, that's what you use. But, uh, okay. Let's let that set up and we'll see what happens. One twenty. Okay guys, I know the compressor's on. It's hard to tell the difference between the uh, Everglass and the bare metal. I'm going to mix that with a different color hardener this time. This is all Everglass. That's not bare metal. Um, you can see I got some slight low spots. Which I expected when you're working clumps like that, that's going to happen. Basically this needs a skin from here to here to here. One skin, smooth it down, pull it flat, pull it good, and uh, and then epoxy it. And then everything's going to get metal glaze anyway to fill in the fine stuff. This could actually get it too because I'm starting to scratch it. But I don't want to go too crazy with that. I'd rather give this one more coat. And I also found too if you coat it with epoxy, it's like a barrier. And it's okay if you break through it. It just makes life a little easier to figure out and to see. Okay? But, uh, it's getting good. Like I said, it's still to the edge. But, uh, we got rid of the high spot. The high spot's gone. It's actually like right here. So, and this is the other stuff. So, you concentrate hard enough, you can find this right there. I think we're getting there. Let's keep working. Okay, full swipe. I always mix too much. That's why I need to have two dents going at the same time. I need to get that patch in the back. This should be the last mix 
on this until uh, epoxy and metal glues. So, and uh, that's it. You just have to work on the door holes on the top. And this door, we have to get up there. We have to press to make a spoon for one. I don't know where the holes are. I don't have much video left. Okay, guys, we don't have much video. This is super rough in. Just flat by eye. Now I'm going to put a guide coat in and flatten it out and call it good for the final thing before we epoxy. So I just wanted to show you guys that. Okay, just a quick guide coat. You don't have to go too crazy. It's in. Okay, guys, that's what you got. You have the filler, and down over here, and come poking through that spot, right there, you have uh, the gray. See it up here too, a little. The gray, um, see no trace of it. The gray Everglass. Um, somehow that Everglass turned gray. I mixed it with red hardener and green. It turned grayish black. We're not doing that again. Just makes it too hard to distinguish between that and what he left behind, which isn't really there, and just the metal. So, but we're good. Have a slight trace right here. Okay, and we have filler on this whole edge. I just want to bring this door out back a hair. I'm talking about two thicknesses of a piece of paper, and then we'll just block that right off. And same down there, and we're good. And that's it. I call that a good repair. So that should last him a little while. Um, time to move on. So tomorrow we'll come out here, we'll start welding. So, and uh, we gotta come out here with the blower and uh, give this place a cleaning. Holy man, it's bad. So that's it, guys. I'm out of here. Have a good day.